What's going on guys? Mike Tierney here with Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about small engine accessories. So you've got an engine, you kind of need to accessorize it. So we're going to kind of split this up into a couple of categories. Components that are accessories that are bolt-on versus maybe some of the maintenance side of things. So first off, um, when you're selecting your engine for whatever application that is, um, maybe you need some driveline components. So whatever it is on, a, say, a go-kart, you want to trick that go-kart out with, you know, maybe a clutch kit. So uh, at the front of the bench here, we have a, a PowerFist engine, just a small five, five and a half horse engine. And um, I've just kind of bolted on uh, just to kind of give you a visual of what a clutch kit could look like. So it has a belt and uh, a couple of clutches inside. And um, basically it works similar to if you know what a, how a snowmobile works. Um, it's a centrifugal clutch that kind of just spins and it'll be on springs and it'll tighten onto the belt and then start your drive. Um, when you go down to idle, you'll stop moving disengages the shaft even without having to turn the engine off. So it's a great support component. Um, it may not be something you always need, but um, you know, I would highly suggest, just suggest getting one of these for a, a go-kart application because it gives you all kinds of uh, neat options on tuning that a little bit more uh, you know, to precise drive modes. So clutch kits, they come in a few different sizes, kind of just have to be careful on the maximum motor size so the maximum um, limit of that torque uh, clutch kit may not fit the shaft that you're looking at on your, your engine. So you want to just make sure that everything is going to mate and that the engine isn't oversized to that size of uh, uh, torque converter kit that you're looking at. Now, on the flip side, if you're looking at trying to reduce the speed, still develop the power that you need out of the engine, that horsepower at full RPM, you may need to go to a, a gearbox. So this is a two to one gearbox. Um, there's a few others. Um, this is just one that we selected. Uh, basically, it's got an output shaft. If we flip it around, it has mounting bolts to mount directly onto the shaft coming out of your, your uh, engine. And it's got basically a, a case. You do need to add oil when you've fully installed this. This takes uh, 30 weight or 10W30. Um, just refer to the manuals depending on the supplier. Um, all that information should be in there. So you do have to add oil. Inside is another kind of slip clutch plates. And what it'll do is it'll change the ratio from a two to one on your output drive. So if you do have to have the power, but slow things down on the drive side. So if it needs more torque, then definitely a, uh, uh, you know, a two to one or other. There's six to ones out there. There's many others. Um, you know, that's, those are also options when it comes to your driveline components. Now, if you're not going with, you know, anything too advanced and you still want to have a clutching mechanism, we've got a couple of options. So these are centrifugal clutches. So spinning outwards, there's springs, they grab a hold and they will start to engage at a certain RPM. That will de be dependent on the type of clutch that you're looking at. They're typically available in two options. So you have, if you choose to go with a gear set. So on the front here, we have a gear set that would go from our mounting it to our engine shaft to a set of gears to the drive line of your equipment. And you also have a belt option. So if you choose to go with a belt, it uses a V-belt um, option. And uh, they're typically specific to the type of belts that you're going to be looking at, whether it's an A-series or B-series. So these are just slip clutches or uh, centrifugal clutches. And uh, they usually have a keyway inside um, that will mount so they don't just freely spin on the shaft. And um, the keyway will stop that from spinning. You do need to add typically um, a washer and a bolt to the front end of the shaft on the, uh, the engine um, to stop that from sliding back and forth. Um, but uh, that's all available through, uh, through Princess Auto. So keep that in mind, there's no set screw on these and uh, you do kind of want to make sure that they don't come flying off. So be prepared to 
you know, have to have a few other little options when it comes to adding clutches to your, your, uh, your gas engines. We're gonna shift over to some of the maintenance accessories. Um, there's a wide variety of them. We've selected a few that are kind of the most common, um, but you can get rebuild kits for pretty much everything that we carry, um, whether it's a parts order or directly in the store. Um, so, you know, let's, let's start with the easiest stuff. So air filters. So we got an air filter. They come in many shapes and sizes. Um, this one's here for a Honda. Um, you'll find that uh, it might be a cartridge style like this with pleating in the, in the filter itself. Um, really, this is just gonna protect your engine from that debris entering your intake and causing issues within your combustion chamber. So it usually has a foam pad. Um, depending on your amount of debris or where you're working in your environment, if it's on things like construction equipment, like concrete, or you know when it may be um, you know lawnmower activity, lots of dust. Um, some people will even take this foam pad off and uh, just put a slight amount of oil. You don't want it soaked. They'll put a little bit of oil in engine oil and uh, wring, wring it out, and you don't want it soaking wet because uh, that'll damage the pleating. And then that'll actually help prolong that filter. It'll capture more of that really really fine particles. And there are filters out there and engines that actually have these submerged in oil baths to help prevent any amount of debris getting into the engine. In these case, these are just basically a dry filter. And uh, you know, you just have to watch them. If this is clogged, your engine's not going to breathe properly. You could get hesitation, lack of power. So it's really simple. You're just going to undo the wing nut that's on the housing. So in this case, on this engine over here, uh, we have a air box housing. There's just a wing nut and you just remove that. Just go and inspect it. Sometimes if it's just loose dust, just take a blow gun, go from the inside out and spray, uh, you know, um, air blast it off. Just make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Um, if it gets really intense, they're not expensive. Replace them every now and again. The manufacturers will have, you know, specific times that you suggest that you should change them, but Let's be realistic. Just do some inspection a couple times a year. Make sure that you know, you've got a nice clean filter and they're not hard to install. They're really, really simple. As we get into more maintenance, um, obviously when it comes to the fire side of an engine are spark plugs. So we carry a bunch of spark plug um, types. So there's gonna be a number that you're going to have to you know, reference to. Um, you know, there are some, uh, this, these are laser spark plugs. Um, Typically, you can go on our website and say, okay, do I have a champion? What number does that represent through our laser? Um, most of them are pre-gapped for that size, but you do want to make sure that, you know, you check the gapping on your spark plug. Um, that way, you're getting the proper um, ignition uh, within the engine, and, uh, you know, that can be eliminating 99% of your problems when it comes to, you know, firing, uh, firing the engine up. So lots of different ones, longer, shorter, fatter, wider. Just make sure you get the right ones. You don't wanna be cross-threading this. Anybody that's worked on engines that cross-thread these, it's a nightmare. And uh, you wanna make sure you get the one that fits. If it's too long in the piston uh, chamber, uh, the piston can actually slap against the bottom electrode um, and that's gonna just go down a really bad path. So make sure it's the right one for the right engine. We also have tune-up kits that include a spark plug. Uh, basically, it's going to come with a, a tune-up kit components. Um, it's specific to certain models, so you would just have to do some research to say, okay, this one works with this engine. Um, but we do have, carry a variety of different tune-up kits. And, you know, this isn't something you may have to do yearly. This might be something every other year. It all just depends on the usage of your equipment. So if you're only using it a few times a year, you're probably not gonna need to you know, do a lot of extracurricular maintenance on tune-up kits, but if you're, you know, if you're using it as your daily you know, uh, workload, you're definitely gonna wanna you know, make sure. Maybe you send that into a shop to do, but if you're comfy working on this equipment, it's no reason why you can't do some, some of your own tune-ups on some of the components. Supplying the fuel, so as our engines are outside, um, you know, weather, heat, um, abuse, 
misuse, whatever that might look like, over time, uh, storage, uh, you know, components do wear out. Uh, fuel lines, things like, uh, you know, um, tins might start to fade, but fuel lines typically will crack over time or split. They may get clogged. So uh, we carry um, fuel line kits, but we also carry fuel line in uh, by the foot. And um, if you choose to buy that by the foot, try to use fuel line only. Don't, you know, substitute it with a, you know, a PVC piping or tubing. That's not rated for fuel. These are rated. This one happens to come with a on-off cog. So, you know, if you want to jerry-rig something up on your, um, your engine and maybe you're using a larger tank and you're changing the way you supply the fuel, you know, buying a kit with some extra footage and then maybe you've got an inline shutoff to, you know, stop that flow and you can do some work on the, uh, the, the carburetor system without having to drain everything. So fuel line's important. Um, you'll notice right away, big thing, if you do see leaks and cracks in your, in your, you know, your fuel lines, make sure you fix them right away because that's going to be dripping probably close to where there's some hot exhaust and that could catch uh, fire and it's just not good for the environment if your engine's leaking and your fuel consumption. So just keep that in mind. Um, try to use, um, you know, the highest grade fuels to help prevent the, the, the clogging. So, you know, make sure your jerry cans, if you're adding uh, fuel to, from a jerry can, make sure that there's no debris going in there. And, um, you know, you're, you're either doing the, the seasonal maintenance on them, swapping out the, uh, the fuel or adding some additives to prevent any kind of clogging uh, because it doesn't take much to clog these lines up and then your engine's not going to perform the way you think it should. So fuel line, really good little option to have. It's only a few dollars. It's nice to have just in case if you do get a, an oopsie split or something catches on it, um, it's good to you know, have, a, have a small portion of it. Speaking of fuel, uh, we also carry some inline fuel filters. Um, this is considered to be an inline fuel filter. Some of the models will have the fuel filter nested inside the tank. And that's a little harder to, you know, to change out because you do have to actually take the tank off, reach up underneath and then pull that out. Uh, but this one here is an inline, so we could add it to the, uh, to the fuel line um, and uh, super simple, couple little hose clamps and um, you, know, you can filter out. You know, if you're in the marine area, you know, you can use this to help prevent any kind of clogging. Um, but, you know, snow blowers, any major, um, you know, um, addition with filters will just help your engine. But you also have to maintain them. Um, there are filters out on the market that you can flush out, um, but they're so cheap that you just, you know, might as well start from scratch. So fuel filters in line are a really good option as an accessory to have. Again, with the fuel side of it, um, we do have some rebuild kits. So there are rebuild kits for your carburetor. Um, basically, the carburetor is the control mechanism for your fuel, air, in, so your engine works. Um, this is kind of like a heart. Um, there's a lot going on in this little guy. And, you know, if it's not working properly, it's, it's just going to give you all kinds of troubles. And the number one reason why these things stop working properly is because of the lack of maintenance. Poor fuel conditions, not treating fuel, leaving it sit, uh, maybe using fuel that's not appropriate for, uh, for the engine. So really, really be mindful of uh, you know, what fuels you're putting in and how you're treating it um, throughout the seasons. Uh, but if you do have issues with your carburetor, um, basically we do carry some carburetor uh, replacements, full replacements like this in our store. Um, they're also available through a parts. Um, you just need to know the model and that because they're not always equal on all different uh, units. Um, so yeah, it's a really simple rebuild. You're going to get um, uh, basically two bolts that you have to undo. It slides off. You're going to have some, um, some um, spacers, you're going to have uh, a few little jetting screws, um, you're going to have to take a linkage off, just the throttle linkage, and um, you're going to have some um, seal kits that you'll need to want to replace. Just make sure that you remove the previous seal kit if it's baked on or cooked on, you want to scrape that off, 
to get a nice finish on finish for the seals to prevent any kind of leaking. Um, they're pretty much one way only, so uh, the bolts will only allow you to put that on on one way, so you don't have to worry about which way you orientate it. Um, they're typically unidirectional. So just keep that in mind. If you're, you know, you're concerned about your fuel and that, you can just undo a bolt on the carburetor. Um, this is the bowl below here, and you'll just undo it. This bowl will come out. Expect some fuel to come out. There's a little uh, float that pulsates back and forth. Make sure that that's flowing freely. Um, if you leave fuel in these things, typically it'll start to go kind of like a, a turpentine color. You're gonna get a different smell out of your fuel. And it can also dry up and turn into powder. And that's where it's gonna start to clog your jetting up inside. And the jetting is simply a, a valve, a needle valve that allows your atmosphere pressure to work with the air coming in and the amount of fuel going into your, uh, your, um, your engine. So if that's not set properly or if that's sticking, that's where you can run into hesitation, stalling, all of those things that would come along with improper delivery of your fuel air mixtures. So the carburetor is probably one of the hardest things to work on if you were to take this apart. It's pretty intricate. Um, sometimes it's just better to replace it or take it in for repair. Now, if it's a standard pull start, recoil start, you know, um, you're constantly, you know, turning that thing over when you need it to run, ropes break. The pull breaks and we carry, um, you know, accessory cords for that. Um, if you, you do break it, there's three or four bolts that hold the recoil on and you just have to rewind it. There is a set of dogs inside that spin outwards on force that link to your your, um, your, your drive shaft, and that's what starts the, the, uh, the engine up. Then they slip back. You just have to be careful when you take that apart that there's a big spring in there that it doesn't go boing, and now you have to rewind that. That takes a little bit of time to do, and if you don't get it in the right orientation, your recoil may not retract all the way, or it'll just kind of hang out. You gotta kind of be careful when you get in there because make sure that you know where things are to get it realigned properly. But these things break, they get a lot of wear and tear, especially if you're really having to pull them over. And uh, we carry the replacements in a variety of different styles. When you're controlling your engine, so maybe you need a throttle cable system. So like on a lawnmower, you've got your, your throttle up here. Maybe you've got it on the side of your lawnmower. Maybe it's on a snowblower, maybe it's on a go-kart, you've got a pedal. Um, you need to be able to control the rate of speed of the engine a little bit more remotely. So we carry a few different designs of throttle cables. Um, some are pretty standard that you would see on many, many um, you know, lawnmowers, that kind of stuff. But definitely the throttle cable allows us to control the throttle, the RPM on the engine more remotely. So there's a design like this, and uh, we have a plastic design, something very similar that you'd see on a, you know, a, a, a rabbit and a turtle or a hare and a turtle, rabbit for fast, turtle for slow, so you idle down. Again, you do have to have that RPM running at a certain RPM to do the work you require. So um, they have simple linkages that will just link into the throttle system on the engine. All right, so as we do our oil changes uh, periodically, hopefully we're doing them you know, somewhat frequently, there are suggested rates of time to, to you know, change your oil, when should I change it. Um, check with the manufacturer's you know, uh, booklet, the operator's manual. Um, they can suggest you know, so many hours typically of usage and then maybe a yearly, two yearly, they sometimes give you kind of a, a, a forecast of when to change it. Um, what I would suggest is which oil you're, you know, you're looking at, 5W30, 10W30, typically they're gonna, you know, most of us are gonna select the 10W30, but depending on the time of year, how cold it is, you may go down to the 5W30 or just check the engine manufacturer's suggested oil. Um, basically, what I do with my equipment 
after about eight hours, if I bought this and I was to put this on a go-kart, this engine here, after about eight hours of actual use, I would probably change the oil because of the wear and tear, just the, the you know, the, just the break-in period of that engine, you may start to get a little bit more material just from the build and you wanna get rid of that. So about eight hours, I typically will change the oil and then depending on the seasonal product, so if it's a snowblower, if it's a lawnmower, or if it's something I'm using all year, like in a generator, for example, um, I'll change it about every 200 hours or so. But again, that's just something I've put on a schedule. That's uh, you know, entirely up to you, but check your manufacturer's recommendations so that you don't uh, you know, go too long. It's no different than if you're, you know, drive a vehicle, uh, you do wanna do your oil changes because of you know, issues within that engine. So don't have to change it all that often, but again, periodically just check with the operator's manual. So good, good way to you know, buy our product. Just as a side note, if you do select an engine from us, there is no oil with the engine. The oil may, or the engine may have a little bit of oil in it just from the testing facility that they were at, um, but it doesn't ha come with oil in it, nor does it come with it in the box. So really be careful if you're you know, just grabbing an engine and going. Um, quite often there's tags put on the oil, um, um, oil dipsticks saying that there's no oil in, but sometimes we miss that and we wanna make sure that when you, you know, need that engine, you've got oil, maybe you have some at home, but don't forget um, they do not come with oil um, and uh, you'll need to pick some up at some point if you don't have any, why not purchase it from us? So um, just kinda ask a team member in the store um, where it is and uh, they'll help you, no problem. Now, my favorite uh, accessory, um, if you've watched previous episodes, um, I can't speak enough about uh, this product, Seafoam Engine Treatment. Um, you know, it's, uh, I call it magic in a can. It's, uh, you know, lots of tests have been done. Um, for me, I always add Seafoam to pretty much anything that I have that has fuel in it, whether it's a two-stroke chainsaw, whether it's a four-stroke, you know, go-kart motor or lawnmower or whatever it looks like, um, outboard engines. Um, you can add it to diesel if you want. But really, this is going to help prevent a lot of those maintenance issues that you'll see if you haven't done that maintenance. So it's going to help prevent, you know, um, fuel from going bad, you know, periodically just adding this in. It'll clean out the carbon deposits that can develop inside your engine uh, combustion chamber. Um, it just lubricates the fuel system and it prevents any kind of gelling in diesel. Um, it's, you know, it, it's a wonderful product. It's cheap in comparison to having to go and replace something that you, know, you didn't do your maintenance on, especially when it comes to the fuel system. So um, really, you know, I can try not to add it directly into the tank, so don't pour it in. The only time I pour seafoam directly in the tank is if I'm going to store it. So if I'm storing an engine, um, I will top up the, the fuel with my jerry can that already had some seafoam in it, but I'll add some extra um, just so I can run that engine for a few minutes to get really anything kind of flushed out and uh, you know, uh, cleaned out and have all the components that fuel will touch inside the engine with sea foam in it. So it'll help any kind of ice ups. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's usually added to the jerry can. So if you've got a five gallon jerry can, you know, how much do you add? Well, you could add the whole can if you wanted to, that gets pretty expensive, but definitely you know, a third of this can, even less. Um, it all depends on your fuel. If you're adding top of the line, high grade fuel that you can out of the pumps, which I would suggest for these engines you do, they run best that way. So 92 or whatever that is in your areas. Um, I would suggest always using that fuel. Um, if you do go with the lower grade, um, I, would, I would always add stabilizer or in this case, sea foam. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, they, they do run w better with higher grade, less ethanol, the better. That's really what it boils down to. 
Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. We'll see you next time.